happen to you that you are lying on a lazy Sunday on your couch thinking about your life, thinking about what you want to do in your life and all of a sudden a philosophical question pops up in your mind about your dreams, about your desires. Had it happened that you come across a question, ah, wait, I don't know what is the difference between my desire and my dream. Hello everyone, my name is Vinay Singh and I dream to be a caring child of my parents. I dream to be a loving and uh, respecting husband. I dream to become a superhero for my children. Though they are very small and for them, they would be more than happy to have me as a daddy pig from Peppa Pig. For my desires, you can go and visit my social media account and you can come and see what are my desires. Uh, it, opens very, it happens very often with me that I'm lying on my couch, having my me time. And during this me time, I reflect and think about myself. And one thing what I have realized over the years, just to give you a background, I was born and brought up in a small town called Dumka in Jharkhand. And when I was growing up in this town, I had a lot of dreams. I could not recollect if I had any desire at that period of time. But as I grew older, as I started moving to different cities for work, for further studies, I realized that my dreams are getting lesser and lesser and my desires are growing more and more. And if not every month, it happens for sure once in a year when we, we have our appraisal and promotion cycle in our office, when my desires are crushed or I know my desires are not fulfilled and that very moment I realize it's my dream which helps me to bring me back. It's my dream which helps me to pull me back from those desperation time and come and start fulfilling what I want to do. So it, it can happen to you and you might be thinking hey 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 hold on a minute what we are doing here we were told that you will be talking about artificial intelligence. Where does dreams and desire comes into picture? Yeah. So let's first understand. Yeah. What is dream and desire? How many of you uh, know about know about your dreams? How many of you are aware what is your desire? What we did was we did uh, you know a survey uh, with uh, with eight thousand people uh, to study. I uh, know. We had a different research question there, but one of the questions that we also asked in that survey was, do you know the difference between desire and dream? And to our surprise, out of these 8,000 people who responded to our survey, 37% of the population, they were not aware or they didn't have a clarity what is their dream and what is their desire. To be very honest, this is a very philosophical question, you know? Each of us can have a different take on dream and desire. And we, when we also ask them, hey, can you tell me, is your desire impacting your dream? And to our surprise, 62% of the audience said that their desires have overtaken their dreams. Now, we cannot define dream or we cannot define desire. It's, it's a very individualistic definition. But if you look at literature, if you try to frame a different definition around it, what we can think of dream is what we build for a group, what we build it for, a, for our family, for our society, for our country. It's inclusive in nature. Um, it is something which, is, which could not be there, which doesn't exist. It is something which is impossible to do. Ironically, desire is very individualistic. It is something which is already there. It is something which is very materialistic. So when you think of dream and desire, I always feel, I always feel that you have to be very clear of what is your dream and what is your desire. Now, the, uh, the reason why we are talking about dream and desire in context of artificial intelligence is if you look the early 60s and 70s when uh, artificial was, so let's say, born, all the applications that we were talking at during that period of time, 
was more about how do machines collaborate with human beings. How with the help of machines, human beings can make their life much better. But the narration has changed in the last 10 years. The last 10 years has somehow brought machines against humans. It's always about machine versus humans or machines against humans. The focus has changed. We have been thinking and working more on how do we commercialize artificial intelligence. The focus has changed. Now we think more of replacing humans with machine. And that's where I think the biggest problem lies. Because the AI dream with which it was invented, where the whole idea was that humans will work with machines or machine will enable humans to be much better in their task has been overtaken by human desire to be better than the others. We, we, we think of how Netflix is making so much money with their recommender system. Can we replace that algorithm with our better algorithm? It's always about a particular data scientist or group of data scientists developing better than what is already there. So, if we think in totality, the focus for artificial intelligence has lost somewhere. The whole and sole purpose of artificial intelligence when it was developed was to use AI to do the impossible. Impossible in terms of novelty, impossible in terms of area of medicine, impossible in terms of area of natural disaster. I really love this uh, equation, which, which is from Gary Kasparov, which he has written in, um, in his book called Deep Thinking, where he's talking in context of a, a chess player and in the context of a game of chess. And he says that a relatively not so good player with machine and a very good process will always beat a very good chess player with machines and poor processes. He is certain about this. He says that if there is a average player with machine, the same machine which uh, the other good player is, is using, and but his, if his processes are better than the, the opponent, it will always win. And th this is the point which I also want to drive here, that it's all about how you are interacting with the machines, how robust your process is. So, we all should be very clear, and I don't need to tell this to all of you, that technology for sure will you know, bring changes. Technology for sure will take over certain elements of human brain. It should be very clear for all of us that what we as human, what we do and we know how to do it, can be done better by the machines. And the logic is very simple. If we know how we are doing it, we can communicate back to machines, we can train them to do it better. But what about those intuitive things which we as human do, which we don't know how we do it? Can machine do it? And this is the biggest difference what we have to exploit. This is the biggest difference what we have to think of. How do we empower machine with our creativity? The sad thing is that the trend has got just reverse. We are waiting for the machines to give us creativity, which was our area, which was our sole area where we were good at. And if the trend continues, for sure, machines will become much creative than our, us because we are giving them that opportunity. What is the need of our is to exploit, explore all the new avenues where we can use, where we can work on having machine learnings for better goodment of human beings. So next slide please. Now, if you see this quotation from Pablo Picasso in 1968, Pablo Picasso told that computers are useless. They can only give results. They can only give answers. And in 2018, Sundar Pichai said, artificial intelligence is probably the most important thing that humans are working on. It has been a long journey. 
it has been a long journey because the whole idea here is that everything begins with a question everything begins with a question your dreams are the question that we want to solve your dreams are the question that you need to answer and to me it seems the answers are the desire and if you have already have an answer for a question for sure you cannot innovate know, know you are already living into an answer world so the analogy here is if you start with your dreams if you start with a question you would be able to get a much better answer if your desire precedes your dream you will not be innovating so now um, what we can also think of is if i tell to you artificial intelligence somehow our mind is programmed uh, thanks to the movie terminator that you think of robots you think of some destructive equipments which is challenging human being which is fighting with human beings the problem is that unfortunately we got stuck there in this world of terminator which was uh, we grew up with this movie for sure yeah but our idea of artificial intelligence got stuck there but believe me there is a big world outside terminator there is a bigger world where ai is being used and if you look around you we have ai everywhere the history is testimony yeah history is testimony that we human beings are very good at scaling so do not misjudge or do not be in dark that the artificial intelligence that we are building up the solution that we are building up with artificial intelligence is going to go away it is here it will be here we have to adjust it we have to work on it uh so let's be you know uh, think of very generic question you know what is artificial intelligence for you what do you make out of artificial intelligence google home siri alexa recommendation in zomato it has ended up for a common people like me and you it has ended up to be a personal assistant which is fair enough i don't complain about it i don't have any problem with having personal automated assistance my problem is that the focus of ai has been more towards commercialization of ai and very often if not every day i come across so many solutions tools which is exploiting artificial intelligence to me it looks more like a sales gimmick what do we need is more of how we can leverage the capability of ai for topic like sustainability for topic like uh, epidemics if you look at the current situation where you know we all the whole world is on food on, on knees because of corona the number of medical trials that were possible were only powered by artificial intelligence the pattern recognition about the virus the mutants was only possible with artificial intelligence and this is the novelty of artificial intelligence which we should harness on here you see a report from um, un's um, sustainability goal and and development goals and if you see this report we have 71% 71 to 79% positive impact of artificial intelligence and if you see the report uh, more carefully we have around 93% in positive impact on the environmental side we have around 80 to 82% on the social side and we have approximately 70% positive impact of artificial economics but we do have some negative impact which ranges between 23 to 35% and i want to address this area i want to address how can we bring down this 23% or 30% to much lesser number for sure ai has its own problem that data center needs energy you produce a lot of co2 from the data center you need to make ai itself green you have social impact of this recommender systems and you have a lot of uh, biasness coming out of it but we all know garbage in garbage out this machines the algorithms that are being developed are developed by people like you and me so i can't come to a to an equipment and say hey you are biased 
because that equipment must be trained by a human being. The data that you feed to that human being is biased. So, of course, we need to focus on this area and our focus should be how do we solve these issues which are again created by humans, not by the machines. So, what should be the key takeaway from my session, you know? So, the first and foremost thing which I, I know I would also recommend you to uh, read the book uh, Deep Thinking by Gary Kasparov and he really gave a good examples there. In his book, he says that nobody remembers the first, third and fifth game which he has with Deep Blue where he won but everybody remembers the second game which he lost. It's up to you and me to decide which part of artificial intelligence we want to remember and which part of it we want to forget. Yeah, it's a very uh, tricky time now. We are living in a very in a tight situation of Corona and everything is locked down around us. You know, all the restaurants and every place is locked down. But thanks to technology that you and me can talk about this conference virtually. Now, since everything is locked down, so you don't have the possibility to have dining in facility. What you can only do is to take a takeaway. So here are the three key takeaways from my talk. The first and foremost thing is collaborate, collaborate with AI. We have designed artificial intelligence to complement humans. It was never designed, it will be, it should be never designed in future to be against human. So we should firmly believe on this. The more we, we collaborate, the better it is for humans. We cannot stop the progress, you know, it, it, it's, it's very metabolic, it's very generic that we will move forward with the topic. The sooner we collaborate, the sooner we buy in the concept of artificial intelligence, the better it is. Second thing, and very much important for all the young audience here, never ever look at machines as the ultimate source of wisdom. Rather, use these machines to verify your own understanding and your approach. Exploit it. Use it for your purpose. Use it to make yourself more efficient and more better. And the third point, the third key takeaway and the most <laughs> loved one, desire have fears. Dreams do not have. Therefore, you should be very sure with your AI dreams and what you desire out of it. Thanks a lot for being a great audience. Um, that's all from my side. Thank you.